What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is The Locker Room, the pre-game team builder show where I talk about the San Francisco's upcoming roster for this week in the GBA. This is week 11, and we're going up against the St. Louis Rampardos and their coach, Dan, aka A-Drive. Uh, I'm really excited for this rematch. This is a conference and division rival, guys, and we are both, we are two of three teams with very good records who are duking it out for a playoff position right now. And um, the winner of this has a very good chance of making it to the playoff, while the loser is going to be kind of behind the eight ball. They're going to be forced to win their next match uh, by a bigger differential than they lost this match, and they need their opponent to lose also. So <laughs> it's, um, it really, it's taking our destiny into our own hands right now, and I'm really excited for this match. So, uh, on the right side of the screen, you can see Dan's team is um, Victini, Heracross, Mega Agron, Sylveon, Salamence, Blastoise, Jolteon, Uxi, Smeargle, Quagsire, 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 and uh, Go Lurk. And um, as you can see on the left of the screen, the team I'm opting to bring this week is Latias, Ente, Mega Pinsir, Blissey, Aromatisse, and Ditto. And now I'll go over why really briefly. So, um, on the right of the screen, I tried to organize this somewhat in a way that uh, it, what I believe will be the six that he brings. So, given what I saw last time, and given the numbers of the matchup this time, I believe the top six are the most likely brings. The next line is in no particular order. There's a good chance he could bring Uxi, Jolteon, or Smeargle, and the bottom line are Pokemon I really don't think he'll bring. Um, Golurk is outsped by a majority of my team, unable to f deal with physically my primary physical wall. As it turns out, I didn't bring my primary physical wall this week, but I still think um, more than anything else, it's it's a less likely bring for him. Doesn't mean he couldn't bring it, but he hasn't brought it much at all this season. Has he brought it at all this entire season? Doesn't mean he won't bring it, but he has not brought it this season. Yeah, so um, it there are better options for him, I think, which is why I don't think he's bringing that. The reason I don't think he's bringing the Quagsire is that if he's going to bring a defensive water type, it's going to be Blastoise because it can rapid spin. If he opts not to bring Blastoise and he wants to bring the Quagsire instead, it doesn't land Stealth Rocks, so he's still going to have to put Stealth Rocks on something else. Uh, more than likely in this situation, the Mega Agron. However, he, if he also opts to bring the Uxi, then <laughs> things get a little things get a little weird that way. Um, the third row, the reason I'm kind of a little non-committal about which one I think is more likely is he could go a lot of ways with it. If he brings the Uxie, I can safely assume, not safely, but I can assume that Stealth Rocks are being are not being packed on Mega Agron. It's more than likely more of a offensive or a tank set and not a support set or a mixed set um, because that's primarily what Uxie does. I don't think he brings Uxie because it can't really wall my offensive Pokemon. Jolteon is just a great bring. It's blazing fast. It can hit really hard. It can uh, form a Volt Turn core with Victini. And Smeargle is if he wants to try and hazard stack me. Uh, the top six, the reason he's br I think he's bringing them. Victini has come to every one of his matches, I believe. Um, as has Mega Agron. So those are both very likely brings. The Mega Heracross really put in work against my team last time. Um, and so I've had to adjust my team for specifically this Pokemon. Um, the Sylveon is a great option because it can run offensive sets that are pretty strong. It can run uh, support sets which are very useful, especially for that Mega Aggron. As with the Salamence, who was actually a pretty good defensive check. Now there's a good chance this Pokemon could be Scarf. There's a good chance it could be defensive. There's a good chance it could be offensive um, with uh, setup. It could be a lot of things, and I think that kind of versatility and that kind of power is a reason he brings it. And then we have the um, the Blastoise, which I think he's bringing because it shuts down Entei, it can roar and phase, it can rapid spin, which is a superior form of hazard removal. And ultimately, I don't really have any hazards on my team, so um, he should be... <laughs> You should be fine to bring it if he really wants to. Uh, let's go over my Pokemon, and I'll ex kind of explain the team that I'm bringing and why I'm bringing it. So, 
Uh, I, I'm not going to go too much into detail about Entei and uh, the Pinsir. Uh, the reason I'm bringing both of them is they are my primary uh, sweeping core. They're very hard to deal with, especially if I weaken the Pokemon that try and resist them. Um, Entei is bringing Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Stone Edge, and Toxic. Uh, I was considering bringing HP Grass just as a failsafe for the Quagsire because even at an Adamant Zero Invested Special Attack nature, it would take it out. That said, I don't really, I'm not anticipating that Quag comes and Toxic could be more useful in the scheme of things. So, um, that's the reason for that. I'm bringing Return, Quick Attack, Close Combat, Swords Dance on Cuddles, because if I get one Swords Dance up, it's uh, it's a difficult situation to find that I can do that, but if I can do that, then Cuddles can pretty much finish off the game, um, barring some very good uh, Intimidate switches with the Salamence. Hoping that he's um, Intimidate and not... <laughs> or assuming that he's Intimidate and not Moxie. Um, so that's the reason for those two. Uh, Ditto is coming because he does have potential setup mons in a Swords Dance, um, a Swords Dance Heracross or a Rock Polish Mega Agron. I believe a Swords Dance Mega Agron. Um, the Dragon Dance on the Salamence, which is uh, pretty scary. He could potentially be a Geomancy passing Smeargle. I don't know. So uh, I want it there for that, and also because Ditto initiates Plan Alpha this week, guys. No, no, he he does not initiate. He is the uh, he is the the cherry on top of Plan Alpha. I have to tell you guys, Plan Alpha. I'm really excited about this. I've been thinking about it all season. The season's coming to an end. I need to do this now, or I will never get a chance to do it again. And I apologize in advance because it involves using a move that I'm not super fond of in competitive play, but I have to do it because Ditto is forming a pair this week with Blissey. Seismic Toss, Thunder Wave, Swagger, Soft Boiled. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed this yet. I'm going to explain it. Um, Eggington baits in physical attackers like that. She can't really do anything to them. Very specifically, the Heracross is going to be very baited in by this. I hit it with a Thunder Wave. It's going to be real. It's going to really want to stay in because now it's it's got uh, supercharged by its guts. But I will outspeed it, and I will get a Swagger off on it. By doing so, he is now a plus two Heracross. If he happens to be able to break through uh, Confusion Paralysis, he will kill Eggington. Ditto will come in and be a choice scarfed plus two Heracross, which is very difficult for his team to deal with. I've even considered removing the choice scarf so that, because the Heracross will probably be uh, Thunder Waved and I won't really need it. But, um,. I'm not going to do that because the Choice Scarf will help me continuing the sweep after. Um, the only way he will outspeed me is if another one of his Pokemon are Scarfed. If that's the case, they might not have the firepower to outright take out Remix. Um, and they would have to be faster than- so it, like a, a Scarfed Ments would put a stop to the sweep. However, it will mean that Blissey has successfully taken out Heracross with the help of Remix. So, because if I can get even two Swaggers on this, it doesn't even matter if the Confusion wears off when he kills Blissey. If he's a plus four um, Heracross and I get Ditto in on it, baby, it's over. It is over. And he might just kill himself anyway. So um, maybe I get a couple of Swaggers on it and then I would, um, I would probably just sack Blissey by seismic tossing it until Heracross breaks through or dies from it. So this is one of my potential Heracross counters. Here's the other. Uh, Aroma Lisa. Aroma Lisa is coming this week as bold max HP, max defense with Moonblast, Wish, or Protect, and Aromatherapy. This is a stop to, uh, to Salamence if it's offensive or if it's defensive. And it is a good switch into Heracross. It's not a great switch into Victini, um, but it can if Victini is choiced and locks itself into very specific sets. Uh, the Victini is 
not a huge, huge, huge problem to my team, but it's a problem enough that I am going to be bringing this week a physically defensive, the red one, Latias. Uh, bold, max HP, max defense with Draco Meteor, Toxic, Recover, and Defog. Um, I was considering running a different move over Draco Meteor, but basically if he's going to switch in the Sylveon on me, I'll probably just Toxic it on the switch. Um, I wouldn't mind Toxic in pretty much anything. The thing to be concerned about is... Actually, yeah, I might end up switching this Draco out because if he is a... If he is a substitute Victini, that could be a problem for me. But uh, what the red one is able to do is switch in on a physical, any physical Victini attack and um, just recover off the damage. And if it's a special Victini, it won't... I still have very high special defense, as you can see there. It's only about 10 less. And I will be able to sponge a majority of those pretty well too. He does not have ice coverage that is super effective. I believe he gets Shadow Ball, but it's non-stab. So unless he is a Specs, uh, he probably won't be two-hit KOing me. Um, if he is V-Create, the beauty of it is that after the defense drops and the speed drops, I will be able to outspeed and really hit it hard back. And so... Uh, that's the purpose of Latias this week, and that's my entire team, guys. Um, I'm really excited to initiate Plant Alpha. If Plant Alpha does not get a chance to work out, then I'm still going to be happy to spread some Thunder Waves on things, get a few Toxics on things. Um, and one of the beauties of this matchup that I kind of noticed is that um, the Latias is not to hit KO by Ice Beam on the... on the... Blastoise. So Latias can switch in and get a free defog off against a Blastoise, even if it opts to go for Ice Beam. I can recover off that damage, um, also if it chooses to stay in. And what it does is baits in the Sylveon, which baits in the Blissey, which gives me another chance to paralyze something or initiate Plant Alpha. So I, I have set into the scheme of things a pretty good one two switch progression if we're doing basic switches so it's going to force dan to make a lot of doubles potentially risky doubles and it's going to give me a lot of opportunity to spread status so it is time for us to have our battle uh thank you guys for watching if you guys are interested in seeing this battle definitely check out the video that goes up uh tomorrow and if you are interested in seeing a drive side of things go check out his channel link will be in the description down below as always my name is jim leader geo you guys are the challengers thanks for stopping by and i'll see you guys next time